Welcome to the orientation videos that are associated with Unit 5 from Working with Health IT Systems. If you recall from the slide deck, the title of Unit 5 is Fundamentals of Usability in HIT Systems. What does it matter? In these orientation videos, you will be shown how to adjust certain aspects of the CPRS interface to accommodate user requests for data display. We'll also be showing you some of the features that are built into the VISTA CPRS system that can be used to facilitate ease of use. In this assignment, you will be expected to interact with the VISTA system, examining features that can improve usability, increase the clinician's situational awareness, and identify areas where you think these could be improved. In the slide deck, we saw some examples of how poor usability can actually contribute to a less than optimal user experience and actually facilitate medical error. For example, you remember in the slides we talked about font sizes. If it gets too small, the screen gets too crowded. It actually enhances the chance of an error. We also know in healthcare that there's a very high turnover rate. So we have to be able to make systems that are easy to figure out. We also have to make it very easy for busy and stressed clinicians to get the data necessary to make optimal decisions. It is also important when helping a user to choose and implement any system that it supports easy changes through the interface, such as increasing the font size, being able to create situationally specific views, or user-defined views. We know from the literature that the ease of use of a CPRS is imperative to decrease workarounds and improve patient safety. I also wanted to mention that if you look in the CPRS user guide and you go to the very back, you will find a whole section of the manual that is dedicated to working with people with disabilities. The VA CPRS system and many other systems work with JAWS, which is a piece of software. JAWS stands for Job Access with Speech, but these are screen readers that actually read what's on the screen. So, I do want to let you know that the CPRS is a system that works with JAWS, as do many other commercially available systems. But if you are looking at your 508 compliance issues and making sure that your system works and is in compliance with the Americans with Disability Acts, or ADA, you may want to check out certain things, such as its compatibility with JAWS or other screen reading programs. You'll also want to check on its capacity to do a few things that I'm going to illustrate here. The first one, which is actually quite easy to do, is increasing the font size. This is critically important for people who are visually impaired. So if you go to the edit bar in the upper left hand side of the screen and click, then choose preferences and fonts, you'll see here you can actually change the font size. What I'd like to demonstrate is if we move this up to an 18 point font, it certainly makes the print a lot larger. And for a visually impaired person, this may be critically important. But there is a trade-off. And the trade-off is that, of course, if you have bigger font, you can get less data on the screen. This means that there has to be more scrolling, more clicking. We know from the literature that the more you distract a busy user by having to navigate across the screen or to click and search for additional pieces of data, in order to make a consolidated whole to support optimal decision making, the more you are also adding cognitive load. And under cognitive load, the chance of error is increased. For me, while I can certainly read this text, again, this is my own opinion that the trade-off is too high here. I don't want to have to do 50 million screen clicks to get a concise picture of my patient. I would probably stick with a 10-point font, which is a standard, and it reveals a lot of data on the screen, so I can look at this cover sheet and get a very concise picture of my patient right away. For a visually impaired person, however, this is a nightmare and may preclude their use of the system that can only display in a print size this small. I also want to mention, before we get too far afield here, that in the CPRS user manual, there are also several pages of screen shortcuts that can be used by the visually impaired so that they don't have to actually click on tabs. The takeaway point here is that when you're working with users and maybe are helping them to either evaluate a system or purchase a system or implement a system, 
you really should be looking very, very closely at many of the usability features. What we're going to cover in Unit 5 is really only related to some of the more simple usability aspects, such as display and font size. Usability is a huge topic, very worthy of a lot of attention, because if you have a system that is not usable, then your system doesn't work. So let me show you another option that can help you to construct a view for your user that may help them. If you go to the toolbar and you click on Options, what this is going to bring up is a dialog box. There's a lot of functionality in here that we will cover throughout the rest of the term, but you also might want to explore a little on your own. For now, I would just like to click on those other parameters. And what I'm going to do with those other parameters is show you how you can actually change the initial tab when CPRS starts. Right now, the default is the cover sheet, and a lot of people like to see that. It gives a very consolidated, concise view of a patient at a moment in time. But not everybody wants to necessarily see a cover sheet. So let's say, for example, if you're working with a lab manager, and they really want to come up, open up patient records in the morning, maybe before or around start early in the unit, and they want to look and see what labs are all outstanding. They don't care about the cover sheet. They want to know about labs. So, you can set up a view that is specific to a particular user need. So let's change the initial tab when CPRS starts to Labs. There are many other features in here too. I'm only going to be dealing with the initial tab when CPRS starts. But feel free to explore these other functions as well. I'm going to click OK and then click OK again. Now, an important point here is that I just changed the setting so that when I log out and log back in, it will give me the lab tab as the initial view when the CPRS starts. So in order to be able to test this, you would have to log out of CPRS and then log back in. So let's exit. Choose my patient and open the system back up. And the default opening screen is now labs. So that's how that particular feature works. Let's go back to that Options screen. Other parameters. I'm going to set it back to Cover Sheet.